Jonathan, do you think we're living in an age of simulacra, where the fake has replaced the real and the imposter has transmuted the actual via technology? Think face filters, etc. What are the implications of reality augmenting technology on symbols and how how are we as Orthodox Christians to live in the world of fake and augmented things? Thank you for your time and attention. So, you know, you know, obviously, uh, Dan is referring to to a theory, you know, uh, by Jean Baudrillard, who is a postmodern theorist, you know, famous, especially in the 1980s, who talked about the question of, of simulation and simulacra and how in some ways the world is accelerating. The, this, the simulacra of the world is accelerating. So the first thing to understand about that is in some ways all technology, all civilization is on that path, is on the line of simulation. And so everything that augments human behavior you know, is on that line. It's not so easy to see when you when you at first notice it like as just tools or you know, or things like that. But then when, especially when simulation starts to refer back to things that are related to intelligence, right? So photographs, um, the technology of representation, you know, you have paintings, you have photographs, then you have the screen. And the screen is the, the main one because we don't realize that the screen frames and reframes. You probably have heard the expression, Dreaming in Technicolor, which was something that came out in the 1960s, which was <clears throat> the augmented colors in movies was affecting people's dreams. And people all of a sudden were dreaming. They realized that they were dreaming with the colors that they saw in movies. And so this type of augmentation now has reached, of course, levels that are are, are crazy with, like you said, filters on phones where the filter on the phone will enhance your picture in a way that will make you think that it's more real than your experience. And so the first thing to understand is that this process is kind of an inevitable aspect of the fall. It's an inevitable aspect of the world of techne, the world of, of civilization. Um, and that it is not, I think that is as Christians, we have to realize that it is in one way not evil in itself, but it is dangerous. Um, it is dangerous because if we forget, it's all about forgetting. Like if we forget the connection, then all of a sudden we can have things like, you know, simulations of simulations of simulations and, and a kind of not unending layers of augmentation. Um, and also, a type of augmentation which is connected to desire especially. Uh, and so I think this is already seen in Genesis in the book of, in uh, the story of, of Cain and how, you know, the daughters of Cain, the daughters of women, of men are seduced by the, 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 the sons of heaven. You know, this idea that there's a relationship between an augmentation of technology and seduction, because in some ways it is a, it can be a hyper stimulation as well. Uh, you know, it's a hyper stimulation which which you know pinpoints a an aspect of you, kind of augments it in a way that 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 um, that can capture you, right? Of course, that's the you know there are many many examples of that. So hopefully that helps you to understand it, understand it. But we have to be careful not to also be. Um, not to be simplistic about it and just, you know, we don't have to be Amish. Like we don't have to be Luddites. Uh, we just have to be wise and understand, you know, the, the difficulty of, um, the difficulty of this problem of, of augmentation. And, you know, especially for Christian, like on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, on social media, it's a tool, but we have to be very careful that it doesn't, frame your reality and if you're attentive to yourself you'll notice that if you're if you're not careful that you end up doing that it's like i want to have an experience that i can now then put on facebook right i want to have an experience that will make a good picture for me to post on instagram and now you're getting lost in the world of augmentation in the world of simulation where all of a sudden the simulation is driving your actions and driving driving your connection to reality itself so um, so that's something def definitely to be care careful about.
So Paula Boddington, hey Paula, it's good to it's good to see you in the chat. That's great. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, as you guys, many, most of you, I hope know that I did a an interview, a few interviews with Paula uh, on my channel. You can check that out. So Paula says John Lanier, VR, VR pioneer, also talked about how switching back from VR can enhance our appreciation of reality, as we can see more clearly what level of detail, and so on that. And so on that reality has to offer, and I guess how all that reality has to offer. Yes. And it is in some ways, the thing about, about the reality of just raw experience is that it's very complex. It's a complex and subtle and a subtle experience. And so what VR does or what enhanced technology does like Instagram or Facebook is that it points, right? It actually, what it does, it frames very tightly and then it points, points in the sense that it enhances particular aspects, aspects that are related to certain desires and certain um, certain um, cues of status, certain cues of beauty, certain cues of, uh, of uh, attraction and seduction. And so it can be more immediately satisfying, right? So think about the difference between like eating a good meal and eating candy. It's something like that, where in some ways, you know, eating eating a good meal is more complex and has has more subtlety, but eating candy is that is that easy kick, right? It's that easy, uh, and so that's the danger, I think, of things like VR and just social media in general is that it's a more immediate uh, satisfaction, but in some ways, not some ways, in, in most ways, a very shallow a very shallow one. So, yeah, David Markham says actually we see a reproduction of a simulacra review. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like you know, if I didn't think that there is a power in simulation and a power in simulacra, then I wouldn't be doing any of this because, you know, your vision of me is very framed, right? It's framed in many ways. It's framed in time. It's framed in space. You know, it's like you don't see that right now I'm not wearing socks. It's like I'm not going to show you that, right? Uh, and so it's like everything is kind of framed towards the, your perception. And so that's that's important to understand.